this out. Hey everybody, welcome back to JDM World. Today, we're gonna to take a look at some measurements that I was just doing down in my basement theater. So I've got three different GSG subwoofers. I've got the uh, full Marty, I've got the new Roundover Marty Cube, and the Devastator, and I was looking at integrating these together. So um, not only will we look at some very simple integration, so I'm not gonna go into time alignment or anything like that, but we'll be able to look at a little impact of EQ, and then also look at the measurements and how these things sum together in the room. So let's take a look and see what happened when I measured out these subs. But before we get started, and in the words of a famous YouTuber who has a lot more subscribers than I do, like and subscribe. And if I get five likes, I will reveal the back of my head. OMG! Here we are in the basement to take a look at the three subwoofers that we'll be measuring today. So first, we've got the original version GSG Audio Full Marty rolling a uh, Ultimax UM1822. So this is the non-roundover version, the old version. Here in the corner, on this side, we have the new version. This is the roundover, and this is uh, the Marty Cube featuring the Eminence 18 Touring Driver. It's the uh, new 8 ohm one that, uh, that I built in the most recent build video. And then in the back, let's run around the corner here, is the Devastator. And this also has an eminence driver, so the 21 inch. And I'll link all of the different products in the, uh, in the notes below so you can see. But this is uh, the set of subs that we're gonna look at. And there is some of the measuring equipment that we'll be using. Here we are in REW and it's time to get down to the fun stuff. So I've gone ahead and measured everything. No need to uh, feel that pain with me uh, through the magic of television. We can skip through all that, uh, but we'll get right to it. So I think the thing that people are most interested in seeing is the uh, the new Marty Cube with the 8 ohm Eminence Touring Driver. Uh, that's the 18 inch, of course, and, and here it is. Um, it's pretty flat all the way down to 20 hertz. Now this uh, uh, area here at 38 hertz and then this one up at 78, this is room induced. So this is uh, this is junk bouncing off the walls and, and having problems just due to my room that has nothing to do with the driver or the enclosure itself. So this thing uh, measured pretty well. Now um, it is eight ohms and that does present challenges with amplification, right? You would really want to hit this thing with 1500 watts to see what it can do. And I don't have an amplifier that can really put out that kind of power into eight ohms. Uh, I'm looking for alternatives right now, but at the moment, um, that is the biggest challenge. Um, and what I've discovered is that if I take my uh, current amplifiers, I've got a Crown and a Behringer, and I just jack those guys up as high as they'll go, I get a lot of background hiss, right? So the noise floor seems pretty not good <laughs> when when I deal with that. So I'm I'm figuring that part out. But I think an appropriate amplifier will uh, will fix that problem, but that's yet to be seen. However, you know, I'm pretty impressed for the way this thing measured, especially if you look at the FS on the uh, the sub itself. It doesn't look like it's going to be great for home theater, but um, you know, this measured well, and then if you can actually dump 1500 watts into it, I bet you could, you know, EQ this out at the bottom end if you want to bring this up another 3 or 4 dB, um, if you wanted to, right? Uh, just remember, I do have the uh, the slope here, a 12 decibel uh, roll off at 16 hertz. So that's, that's the Marty Cube. Now, let's give you some frame of reference. Um, with the exact same amount of power, this is a uh, full Marty running the UM1822, but as you saw in the video, it's another three feet away from the MLP, main listening position, um, and that's what this one looked like. Now you can see over here on the right-hand side how the room has just destroyed, uh, you know, the response of, of this thing, you know, especially at uh, 62 hertz and then again up here at 94. Not that 94 really matters because it'll be crossed over that high, but you can see what's going on. Um, on the low end, uh, I think the Ultimax along with that box, remember the amplification is identical, um, is uh, is making the uh, that sub win a bit. Now, 
as I said before, if I could drop 1500 watts into that Marty Cube with that eminence driver, I think we could make this uh, purple line look just like this green line if we wanted to. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I need something. Speaker power, hook me up, somebody. <laughs> if anybody has any ideas, um, let me know uh, about that. So that's, uh, that's the two Martys, the full and the cube. And then uh, the Devastator without the required EQ boost looks like this and it's uh, it's much closer um, to the uh, to the microphone to the test um, recording microphone than the other two subwoofers and it looks kind of anemic here but tell you what when uh, with the EQ and enough power these things just become beastly I mean watch all the old videos I made a bunch about the the devastator and it is I'm just in love with it it's it's a, it's a wonderful thing um, now these three, when I record them and uh, and all together, when I take the measurements, looks like this, and that is a magical summation of those three subs without any work whatsoever. This is just all three um, with without any EQ, without doing any time alignment stuck in the positions in the room where they kind of worked. Um, the boxes are big and they can only go in certain places, but if you look all the way from 20 hertz all the way up to 70, and I think I'm gonna cross over between 70, 75, because all of my uh, uh, surrounds, mains, and everything, they, they all have multiple eight inch drivers, so they are very competent down to you know 40 or 50 hertz on their own. So I can cross over at 70 or even 60 if I wanted to without any issues. So this is epically flat <laughs> for something that's not time aligned. Um, but and this is really, I think, what most people are going to want to do themselves. You know, uh, unless you're really super hardcore, folks really aren't going to be doing a lot of time alignment. Um, and I like time alignment, especially for impulse control, so you can make the, the bass sound arrive at your listening position all at the same time. Uh, but a lot of people will use it for uh, getting rid of cancellations and, and that kind of stuff and make everything uh, summative. Is that the right word? Make sure everything sums correctly. But this is uh, this is out without any time alignment. This is just straight up, let's measure them and then measure them all together. Now, um, I did want to put the uh, EQ on the Diva. So uh, if you take that Devastator and this is uh, with the EQ. Let me see if I've got, yeah, here we go, no EQ. So that's what it looks like when you take an ad. I think it's 12 decibels of boost at 20 hertz with a uh, Q of 0.7, I think it is, if I remember it, remembering everything correctly off the top of my head. So it, it makes a lot of difference. So now when you take that and you also add some house curve, um, that you do with this EQ uh, piece up here, meaning that you can uh, you can take uh, take your measurements and then REW will tell you the correct EQ modifications to put into your mini DSP to make it match the curve that you're going for. Um, that looks like this, and this is with the uh, the house curve where it gives a little bit more mid ba mid base. So. We will turn off that diva and then look at the EQ'd version versus the non-EQ'd version. And remember, I've got uh, the crossover working here, uh, so it's a high-pass filter, I'm getting rid of everything low so that you don't blow up your subs. And then I've got uh, all of the EQ settings, including the 20 uh, hertz bump that's recommended from uh, GSG. I have a couple of photos and I'll be throwing those up so you can see what that looks like. Um, but that's uh, that's what we're looking like. I mean, th for these three subs, they're all GSG, um, kind of to the spec bills. And I've got bill videos for all three of these. These are, these are bills that anybody can do. If I can do them, anybody can do them because I am not handy at all. Uh, but, you know, this. Uh, the, these things are great. I mean, you can do, they, they'll, they'll play this flat uh, line all the way up to beyond 115, so louder than you need it to be, up into the 120s, uh, maybe even up to 130 if I just pushed everything as hard as I could. Um, I, I have no need for anything quite that loud, but 
yeah, it's, it's great. These are very inexpensive uh, subwoofers that you can build yourself. They give you a really great response in room. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this information has been useful to you. Um, if so, slap like. <laughs> you got to check this guy out. He's Davey512 or something like that. It's this bass guitar guy. And uh, my kids just love his videos. Um, anyway, I, I digress. But yeah, if you if you like this stuff, please, uh, please give me a like and subscribe. And uh, let me know below what kind of success that you've had with uh, aligning your subwoofers and tuning them up to get your best performance. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.